Do you dread physical therapy school interviews? Do you have one coming up? Turn your anxiety into excitement because in this video, I'm going to teach you the number one strategy that has helped thousands of students get accepted into physical therapy school and I teach them this strategy all the time. You won't want to miss this. Let's get into this. Lego. What's up everyone? My name is Dr. Justin Lee, physical therapist. I'm a PT school admission expert and I help students get accepted into physical therapy school the first time. So this strategy is super crucial when you're giving your responses in your physical therapy school interview. Of course, you have the typical dress nice, you know, dress to impress, make sure you are confident and have good body posture. But what do you actually say? There is a formula to all of this and I'm going to teach you about this right now. So make sure you're paying attention and taking notes. So when you give your responses, when you're talking, when you're communicating, the number one thing that you always have to have are stories. Stories resonate with human beings. And if you don't have a story, don't have an example, don't have an experience that you can share, then your answers, your responses are going to be flat. The people, your interviewers are going to lose their attention and they are not going to remember you. So I'm going to teach you how to create stories and what specific stories you should have already prepared going into your interview because these are going to be a game changer. You don't want to miss out on this. And this next part is super crucial. So there are two parts to this. The first part is the formatting of the story itself. You want to make sure that your story telling in a way that captures attention and engages the interviewer. Right? So I'm going to teach you how to do that here in just a bit. And the second part are the examples. What examples should you have prepared going into your interview? I'm going to teach you those specific things. So let's dive deeper into how you should format your stories. So a good story always has three critical parts and the third one is really important. So the first part is you as a person has to encounter some kind of struggle or a conflict. This is really important because it sets up the scene. Every good story has a problem or a villain, right? And it's up to that main character to address the problem or the villain or fight the villain or, or defeat the villain. So that's the second part is you overcoming that problem, you overcoming that conflict or you solving that problem or conflict. This makes a lot of sense, right? Because you as the main character need to solve that problem because every problem always gets solved. That's a good story, but it doesn't end there. The third part that is the most critical part of any type of response or story is how you have been transformed in that journey to overcome the problem. I was shocked when I have mock interview sessions with students trying to get into PT school, when I ask them to give me a response, number one, they don't tell stories and number two, they don't know how to tell a really good story by having these three parts. So this video is really important to teach you the formatting of all of this. And I'm going to give you an example of what I'm looking for in just a bit, but I was just so amazed and really so shocked that students don't know how to give these responses. So let's give an example of what this should sound like. One time I was helping a new patient go through several exercises and I realized that the patient and I were not communicating well. I was telling her to do one thing and she was doing something totally different and things start to escalate. She starts to get frustrated and she starts to give me a little bit of attitude and then I got frustrated and I got offended because she was giving me attitude and this started to slowly spiral and kind of build up. And I got to a point where I said, you know what, I need to pause and figure out how to get this patient to do their exercises correctly and also come to a collaborative agreement where she can leave happy and empowered. So instead of telling her what to do verbally, instead I pivoted my strategy and I started to show her, I demonstrated the exercises. I then started to tap on certain muscles where she should feel what muscles should be activated. Instantly, things started to change. She started to understand what was going on. 
her movements became clear that she was doing them correctly and she felt the same understanding of which muscles should be activated. During this process, I really grown from this experience because this could have went totally south and we could have had a big argument and I would have left offended, she would have left offended and things would not have ended up well. However, during this experience, what I have learned is that not every patient learns the same. So whether that be verbal cueing that doesn't work, maybe people understand better, better with demonstration, with visual or tactile cueing, uh, with that kinesthetic touch. So going into the future with different patients, when I encounter patients that don't initially uh, resonate well with that verbal cue, I immediately pivot into using a demonstration approach or a tactile approach and this solves a problem every single time. And I'm really excited to use this strategy in the future when I work with my future patients. All right, so you guys saw what happened, right? Situation was stated, there was a problem, then you talked about what the solution was, and then finally, what did you learn and how are you transformed during that process. You have to use that strategy with every single story that you share because that is what's going to engage the interviewer. Now, what I'm about to share with you is going to transform the way that you approach your interview questions. And it's going to be this you have to be prepared with stories going into your interview, along with this three-part process of how you're going to communicate these stories. So pay attention. These are the stories that I want you to have in your back pocket. One, when was there a challenge and how did you solve that challenge? How did you save the day? Two, when did you show leadership? Three, what drives you to stay motivated and keep moving forward? Four, a time when you had a conflict with somebody or a patient. Five, a time when you messed up and what did you learn and how have you grown in that situation? I can almost guarantee that any interview question that you get asked, you're gonna be able to use at least one of these five examples, but it doesn't stop there. If you want more examples, I teach this in my online course, but I'm gonna give you that worksheet for free. Go to the link in the description. I call this my story collection box. Pretty much you're collecting stories and you're gonna have it in a box. And whenever you get asked a question, you're gonna open that box, pick out a story and use that story to share in your response. If you want that worksheet, make sure you go to the link in the description. I'm telling you, this strategy is a game changer. Make sure you tell the stories and communicate it correctly and make sure you're going into your interview prepared with several stories in that story collection box. I promise you, you're gonna go into your interview radiating confidence, knowing that you know exactly what to say. Now, having these stories are really important to prepare for your interview, but what other things can you prepare for? How should you dress? If you're virtual, how should your camera, how should your lighting, how should your setup be? Because all of that absolutely matters. What about the different common questions that you're gonna get asked? Like, tell me why you wanna be a physical therapist. Tell me about yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? If all of those strike some thoughts in your mind and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I need to know about that and I need to know how to approach those questions and prepare for the interview, I can help you out with that. Actually, right now, I have a special going on and I have two services, an online course and a mock interview session. Both of those you can pay for separately, but my students who get accepted into PT school do both. And if you're interested in getting that program, the interview program, go to the link in the description and you're going to learn all about that. The students who do both the online course and the mock interview with me whew, get accepted. And I'm confident that it's going to help you too. If you have any specific questions about your mock interview or about the specific school that you are going to interview at, during the mock interview session, we're going to talk about all of that. And during that session, I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to tell you where you need to work on what I thought was really good and help make sure that you are fully prepared and equipped to have a confident interview coming up. 
If you watch this video all the way to the end, I really would appreciate if you give this a like. And if you have any questions about the interview process, let me know in the comments below so I can make more videos like this to add value to the online space. Every day is a great day to lift weights, lift others, and lift yourself up. Stay lifting.